Hey, welcome back to Good Old RVing. I'm Greg, if you don't already know. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, something that nobody hardly ever mentions. And that's the tools. What tools are you going to need to actually do a do-it-yourself solar system? Okay, so first off, if you are not mechanically inclined, I suggest don't even attempt it. If you are mechanically inclined, I suggest if you don't know electrical, do not attempt it. Um, it could be very expensive. It could be very deadly if you don't do things properly. Um, myself, this is my first time. And I don't know how many times I looked on YouTube and Facebook pages and got help from people. Um, I still have to go back and double check everything I do because electricity is not something to play with okay and so let me talk to you about tools okay so if you're handy you probably already have a few of these things but let's talk about the things you may not have also okay if you could look behind me this is my project right here and uh, I'm still working on it. I just finished hooking up the AC lines for the inverter today. Okay, so first off, circular saw. Okay, circular saw, all that gray backboard there, I had to cut all that out. That's the tool I used. That and a jigsaw. All right, and yeah, I like Milwaukee. What can I say? And so, um, those two saws are what I used for that. Made things real easy. Um, the multi-purpose tool. When I was putting the monitoring devices inside, this made things real easy, all right? Um, it's not like drywall where you could just use a drywall saw and do 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 and you're done, no. It's that eighth inch thick paneling that will bend with the saw blade. And so this will make it easy. It's a little noisy, but it'll get the job done. Okay, next, let's talk about the drill. All right, again, another Milwaukee, of course, okay. Um, it's a good drill. It has different speeds, so you don't over torque your screws and strip them out as you're putting them in. Um, you also need a good set of drill bits, which I happen to have right here. Right here is a good set of drill bits. It has all the different sizes and it also has the nut drivers. And so you could uh, screw things into the metal with self starter screws or the wood um, I've had to use the, the uh, nut drivers, square tip, Phillips tip, flat tip, and Torx bit screws doing this project. And so just a heads up, you will use a few different ones. Okay, also, you'll need a good set of drill bits, all right? I've had to use different small ones for starter holes. Just makes life easier to put a starter hole in there or primer hole, whatever you want to call it. And then I wanted this big set so I could get up to the bigger sizes so I could run a, a wire or something through that hole. Um, okay. So let's see. We got that done, that done, that done, that done. Okay, hole saws. You might need to get a hole saw. You might need to use a hole saw. All right, I used the hole saw when I mounted my BMV 712. Slam this in there and bam, you're done. It's so easy. Um, this particular one I got at Home Depot. You see how easy it comes apart so you can change the size of your, your saw blade. You just screw that in there. I mean, this is a matter of seconds. That's the only reason I'm showing you. And then when you line up the holes, you just push. Locks in. You're done. How simple is that? Okay. 
So that covers everything for the drill. Okay, next you're going to be needing a square and a straight edge, or you could cheat and use a square, mark the line on both sides, and then use a 2x4, whatever, that's straight, piece of aluminum stock, whatever you have that's straight as a straight edge, and run your line so you have something to cut on. But I use a square that helped me make all of my uh, all of my backboards in there. Okay, next you got these. These are your uh, typical crimpers. You can get them at auto parts store, or whatever, for your small 16, 18, 13, 12, 10 gauge wires. And I'm just saying some of those numbers, those gauges don't exist. Um, this is my favorite screwdriver. I use it for just about everything. It's kind of like my screwdriver slash pry bar. It was in my dad's stuff, so it kind of has sentimental value to me. It's never bent all the times I've used it. Next vice grips. Um, with me, it's sometimes it's just easier to put a vice grips on the back of something and lock it in place and then use the socket or wrench or whatever on the front until I get it tight. It's just me. Don't put it on the nut side. It's got to go on the head of the bolt side or you could possibly be squishing that nut onto the bolt making it harder for you depending on the type of hardware you're using. Okay, next, regular Phillips screwdriver. Bit driver screwdriver. I use this a lot because sometimes you just, you don't want to use power tool, just use a hand tool. And that bit set that I showed you earlier, all those bits fit right in here perfectly. Next, strippers, cutter strippers. This is a pretty nice set. They're also in Milwaukee. Um, they've done good for me on all different types of wire. And also peeling back the insulation on the wire. So, highly recommended on these. Okay, for me, <laughs> you see my battery bank right here. I actually dropped some a nut back there which you can't just move that battery bank out of the way and so um, this tool right here came in pretty darn handy I was able to get behind that battery in the wall and latch onto it and pull it up and I saved myself a trip to the hardware store for one nut so something like this could come in very handy not necessarily needed but a handy tool to have. Okay, wrenches, assorted sizes. You're gonna need these on uh, a lot of your components. As you could look in here, on my distribution panel, I got a whole bunch of nuts on, uh, on a bunch of the stuff. I got nuts on everything. The switches, there's nuts on the backs of them, and just everything, and so just have yourself a, a good, not the long giant ones, you don't need those, but a nice shorties, set of shorties would be good. Um, ratcheting type, they're a little bit thicker on the box inside. Sometimes you don't have that space, and so I suggest just using your standard box in. I even used, because I couldn't find the right size, I even used a uh, line man's wrench, or a line wrench, instead of a uh, box in. It works the same. It's a little bit thicker, but it works the same. Okay, needle nose pliers, very handy to use. Okay, let's see. Mare. Mare is very handy to use. <laughs> I was trying to get to the wires on the back of the inverter there, 
and the, they're facing down and you have to put the wires up but your only vision is straightforward and so this mirror came in real handy that and my phone if you use your phone and you put it to where the pictures like you're taking a selfie um, and then just put it under you could use that it'll be like a mirror also and so that's just a little thing I do sometimes um, next is a small skinny jeweler screwdriver I guess you call it but um, if the wires don't go into like the inverter those type of fittings properly you need something like this to push up on that fitting on that uh, connection to release the wire from being inside it's a small little screwdriver like this next you got these crimpers these aren't just ordinary crimpers these are crimpers crimp stuff square and you have different sizes one size will fit one range another size will fit another range and it just so happens when you're working on this system with number six number eight number ten uh, wiring and I also use 16 18 and I think I have some 12 yeah I don't have anything under 18 I don't think but anyways you need two different sizes and what I'm talking about is so they'll crimp these things right here all right these guys go on the end of the wire and if you can see in here on my uh, charge controllers I have to put these on the end of all those wires because when they're not on the end of the wire very possibility you could create a short and so these are extremely recommended by many people however when you look at people building their system they never mention it and so I'm mentioning it for you so that takes care of these special crimpers and the wire ends okay flashlight everyone needs a flashlight all right this one I like because I can just sit it in there and it lights up everything I'm doing so that takes care of that okay um, these guys right here if you're gonna make your own battery cables which most people do because you're not everybody has the same setup and their batteries aren't going to sit exactly the same for everybody so your cables are going to be different lengths and you may want to use a different size like i'm using four four i that's four slash zero not four gauge but four slash zero and uh, i built all my own cables now in order to build your own cables you need the wire cutters or cable cutters A hydraulic crimper and this kit has many different sizes so it'll work on many different size cables this one works on anything from my six gauge solar wires all the way up to my four gate four aught um, battery cables and so it's perfect for me in that aspect and it just so happens that this set is metric they do have a uh, standard size ASC size sets and so um, just thought I'd throw that out there in case you're wondering then after you cut your cables and you put the ends on then you need a heat gun right here this the simple one I found I got this one at Harbor Freight really easy gun but um, you need a heat gun so you could put your heat shrink on and when I do the heat shrink I always use the type with the adhesive inside so when you heat it it adheres to the cable and the lug on the end okay and so that covers the majority of all these tools now here's the thing that is often forgotten about because most people doing it already have this stuff but a multimeter you need a multimeter um, 
they come in handy. You could check the polarity of your solar panels to make sure you're wiring them correctly. You could check the polarity of your cables, the voltage of different points. I mean, it's a troubleshooter plus it's a verifier, all right? And so, um, yeah, you need a multimeter if you're gonna work with any type of electronics. And my multimeter, will, this one here, will register AC voltage or DC voltage. Um, this one's pretty, how can I say? This one's pretty uh, heavy duty. Yeah, I guess I can say heavy duty. It's a Mac. And so, um, that's what I got while I was a mechanic. A long time ago, before I retired. Okay. So that covers it. Uh, if you have any questions, ask. If you're a qualified electrician, uh, you see I forgot something, chime in, leave a comment. It's not only for me, it's for everybody. Everybody should know the right way to do things and what's the proper tools to do it with. And uh, if they don't know, it's not safe for them to be doing it. So let's keep everybody informed and um, that's my goal just to share what I know with you and I hope that I'm doing a good job of that. If I am, hit like. Um, I try to put out videos at least once or twice a month. Sometimes I get lucky and get four out but I'm retired and I get busy doing different things and it takes a lot to put out these videos and I do not get paid in any way for these. I buy everything myself and I do all this on my own time and absolutely no money is coming back to me from this at this time. So yeah, that's all I got. Um, I hope that with what I showed you, you're able to do a much better job and cleaner, efficient job. So, um, thanks for watching. Until next time, safe travels. Best of health to you. Bye.